Welp, another beautiful Saturday of college football has ended, and I gotta tell you, it was not pretty for a lot of top 25 teams. First things first, though, the Pac-12 revealed its schedule, and the most bizarre thing has occurred. We have a big noon kickoff for a Pac-12 game. Arizona State, let's get firm for Herm, taking on Clay Helton and the USC Trojans. Um, honestly, you know, it's it's a game that's going to happen because, I mean, it's been so long since, you know, and, there, and there's really nothing you can go off of right now. Nothing you can go off of and say, oh, well, yeah, there's that. Um, second order of business, the Trey Lance showcase. Um, it was not. It was not particularly the greatest performance out there, but I mean, he still had Trey Lance still had damn near 300 yards on his own and four touchdowns. He finally threw an interception, and you know North Dakota State was down for a little while against Central Arkansas, but it's okay. It is a okay. North Dakota State wins. Now, I don't know about the spring season as far as what the FCS is doing. I don't know if he's, he's probably not going to play during that time. And he'll probably go to the NFL draft. But this this was a good performance. Not the greatest, a good performance. And, you know, if you have ESPN+, Plus, I, I envy you. I envy you so much because there was no stream for this game or nothing. I mean, there there wasn't there wasn't one on Sports Surge or anything like that. It was just you had to go to ESPN Plus to watch the game, or if you live in North Dakota, NBC North Dakota, those guys out there they usually put the games up on YouTube a couple days later. So I may try and watch it later. But on Friday night, BYU took care of business against Louisiana Tech. Took care of business. They're still undefeated. And they've eh, they got some games back on the schedule. Boise State is back on their schedule, along with San Diego State, because the Mountain West Conference also released their schedule. And we'll talk about a Mountain West team in a moment. But uh, it's great for BYU to have those games added back because I mean they they were just they were just looking around and trying to find somebody to play, trying to find somebody. Um. Let's talk about some of these top teams first, you know, the top four, of course. And, you know, we thought we were going to get a interesting top ten matchup with Auburn and Georgia, but Georgia just blew Auburn out. Um, Bennett is the quarterback, apparently, now for Georgia, and he did a he didn't even need to do much. Didn't even need to do much against Auburn. Auburn just could not get anything going. I turned that game off rather quick, so, and, um, yeah, so 27-6 to six is the final there. Florida, Kyle Trask still tossing touchdowns on a whim, but, you know, defense, I don't know about the defense yet, man, because, I mean, it still needs a little bit of work, you know, you, don't, you did allow 24 points to South Carolina, you didn't, it was a comfortable win, but it wasn't, you know, an easy blowout. It's not an easy blowout. Speaking of blowouts, Tennessee blew out Missouri, so that should be interesting there. Uh, oh, um, not North, yeah, North Carolina State upset Pittsburgh on a last second, you know, on, or rather on the last few seconds of the game, you know, um, tight play, touchdown pass, um, you know, 30 to 29 was the final there. Crazy that Pitt was even ranked still, but you know, it is what it is. Um, SMU, first team to be 4 0. They beat Memphis on a field goal at the end of the game. I mean, Roberson had like 200 yards receiving, even though he got injured, I think, during that game. I should have just stayed on that game for pretty much the entire time, but the, there was something very, very interesting going on out there. 
in Massachusetts with North Carolina taking on Boston College. And Boston College really got hold at the end. They really, um, you know, they had, they came up with the ball at the end of the game for, for the onside kick, but instead, you know, Sam Howell, who threw for 225 yards and a couple of touchdowns, by the way. Uh, instead, North Carolina, you know, gets the victory. They got it. Cincinnati continues to roll. They beat South Florida rather easily, 28-7. to um, So, yeah. Yeah, there's that. Um, they should be in the driver's seat for something. The American is, you know, getting low on chances for teams to go to the playoff because Tulsa, who should have beaten Oklahoma State, by the way, and we'll talk about them in a moment, um, they upset UCF. UCF loses again to Tulsa. How many times is this team going to lose to Tulsa? Tulsa's a scrappy young team. They are, they are some fighters, let me tell you. They're just like Boston College. They are some fighters, and they stuck around to the very end and beat UCF. So now UCF no longer unbeaten. Speaking of a disappointment, um, that air raid... We were praising it last week, and then Mike Leach and company down there in Mississippi State follows this up with a loss to Arkansas, who hasn't won an SEC game in over two years. They have not won an SEC game in years. In fact, the last big member, I don't know if you know this shirt with this, with this um, logo on there, you remember a couple of years back, you know, Arkansas got absolutely embarrassed by U of T. So to see them win this game like this muffed punt return at the end of the game, just absolutely, absolutely bad way to lose. Bad way to lose. Um, Alabama, Mac Jones is just, I mean, those, res I mean, Najee Harris, um, Jalen Waddle, um, uh, Michi, I think that's his name. I don't know how you pronounce his name, but he he went off today. He had two touchdowns. Waddle had a touchdown. Mac Jones just did whatever he wanted. I mean, Nick Saban and company just continued to roll. They just steamrolled Texas A&M. I mean, despite the fact that there was a big turnover that that you know that Jones threw a pick. I mean, it didn't even matter because I mean. A couple of plays later, I think, um, you know, there was a pick six that Kalamon threw. Just not a good performance by a &M. Defense is still, you know, there's still some things to work out, but I think, you know, Alabama is back to being Alabama. You know, the Alabama of old, not the Alabama of 2019. The Alabama of 2019 just was not, you know, did not have the greatest defense in the world. Um, so now let's talk about the conference that, you know, my team is in, the Big 12 Conference. What a shit show. What a terrible, terrible performance by this conference today. I don't know what in the world is, what in the world is going on out here. You know, the only undefeated team left in the conference is Oklahoma State. They're the only shot that the Big 12 has to get to the playoff, and they easily beat Kansas because it's Kansas. Come on, stop it. But TCU, Texas was a game maligned by penalties. Penalties just everywhere. We're talking a first quarter that took an hour. It took an hour to complete the first quarter. You know, usually first quarters in college football are about 40 to 45 minutes. This took an hour. This took well over an hour. This game was four hours long. And I was getting pretty bored um, after about two hours, and I ended up, like, falling asleep, kind of, sort of. Um, and, you know, here's the thing. Max Duggan just played a little bit better. He just played a little bit better. I don't think he even threw a touchdown in the game, if I'm not mistaken. Texas's defense is just not good. This is just, they let Duggan go all the way untouched into the end zone to win the game. And then Keontae Ingram just had to extend his arm 
over the goal, try to extend his arm over the goal line anyway. And that didn't work because you fumbled. You fumbled. This defense is suspect as hell. These these same two or three plays are being called on offense. Like, like, like I can tell you, QB draw, a screen of some type, a long throw, uh, maybe like an inside you know zone or something like that. Th- 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 those are those are pretty much it. Need to get more creative with the play calling out here, Herman. Need to get more creative. And then, you know, to just to cap off the refs being bad, because, I mean, there was just some penalties that just did not make any sense. There was a holding that didn't make any sense. Um, there was a pass to the France that didn't make any sense. There was three straight times we had to open up the game with kickoffs because of TCU just kept going off sides on the kickoff. And there was a second left, one second left. Safety, you know, 33-31. That's the final score. It should have been, you know, one second left on the clock. But no, there was not. Not even gloves. What a disappointment. And then, last but not least, are these Oklahoma Sooners. Not even, not even going to sugarcoat that this defense is also bad. Might be worse than Texas's defense. It's just bad if you let... Brock Purdy throw the ball all up and down the field like this. Spencer Rattler throws a key interception late in the game, which I mean there was some, you know, holding in there, but I mean it doesn't really matter. He overthrew the receiver anyway. It was going to be picked off. Just, you know, I mean the defense was hounding him all night. You know, the Iowa State defense just hounding him all night. And you know what that means? Two losses. For Oklahoma, out. You are out of the college football playoff picture. Talk about early. It is October, and you're out. And if Texas loses next week, they're out too. I mean, I'm just going to be real. I mean, it's going it's gonna to be bad. It's going to be a real rough game, I can tell, next Saturday morning. And it's going to be early, bright and early at noon, Eastern, anyway. Um, but yeah. So there, there's something that I'm kind of looking forward to, but then again, not really, because I mean, it's just just awful. Both these teams, Texas and Oklahoma, are awful. And now the only hope for the Big 12 is Oklahoma State to get into the playoff. I don't think anybody else has the momentum, and it, it's going to be a cannibalization in the Big 12 unless Oklahoma State can come out unscathed because I don't think Texas has it. I don't think Oklahoma has it. Well, Oklahoma doesn't have it now because they have two losses. But now it's looking much clearer that, you know, the top four and maybe Ohio State, Penn State, you know, that combination down there that, that's awaiting to play, they're, they're, they're going to, you know, be out there on the lookout. So I think it'll be a combination of – ACC team, probably Clemson, that we know of for sure, unless North Carolina or Notre Dame or Miami, if Miami, you know, can beat Clemson next weekend. It'll be an ACC team. It'll be an SEC team. It could be Bama again. It could be Georgia again, you know. Don't think it's going to be LSU. Don't think it's going to be Mississippi State. Um, and it's definitely not going to be Auburn. They just did not play very well. They didn't even play well against Kentucky, um, first first game of the season. Uh, a Big Ten team, of course, is going to be in. And I think right now it will be either Ohio State or Penn State. Those are just two of them. Those are just the two most talented teams in the conference. And that, those are the ones I'm the most sure about anyway. And then the fourth spot will be. Um, up for grabs, somebody's going to get it. I don't think a group of five team will get it, unfortunately, unless you know Cincinnati can maneuver its way up in there. But I think you know the fourth spot will probably go to a second SEC team, maybe Florida, which has also been dominant in a way. Um, but yeah, last but certainly not least, we have Air Force Navy um, for reals this time. Last but not least. Air Force came out in their red tails uniforms, and which looked nice, by the way. 
and just absolutely blasted Navy. Navy had to start a third quarterback because Dalen Morris didn't make the trip. And Air Force was missing 30 players. 30 players. And still just destroyed the Naval Academy. Air Force gets back to work in Mountain West Conference play um, later in the month on October 24th along with the Big Ten coming back as well on that day. So it should be interesting, you know, to see how that progresses. You know, some Mountain West teams only have six conference games like Air Force. Some only have seven like San Diego State and Boise State. And the rest have eight. So there's that. Pac-12 is, you know, just is as it is. The California schools aren't really going to be playing each other. They'll just be, you know, the main rivalries for the um, for the California schools playing this year, so there's not going to be like USC Cal or UCLA Stanford. It's, that's not going to happen this year. So there's that too. And a lot of Friday games as well for the Pac-12. But yeah, so the ACC and SEC are in the driver's seat. Big Ten, while they still have to wait another few weeks, they're in the driver's seat as well. And who will take the fourth spot? We'll find out who will. Uh, it could be Oklahoma State too. You know, you never know. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this week. Week five was an interesting week, although I kind of, you know, was on and off, you know, sleeping. But it doesn't even matter because, you know, it was an interesting week. We learned a lot. We learned who are the pretenders and who are the contenders. The contenders, they're looking like they're going to run away and not look back. Now the pretenders are just sitting there, twiddling their thumbs, wondering what in the world is going to happen next. So with that being said, everybody, my name is Big Boy Variety, and I'll see you guys next time.